Hello, and here is another update on the Blood of Bahamut uh, translation. I'll just show you a little bit more of the game. I showed you last time, it's pretty good how it's working, but um, I'll show you a little bit. It's different here. Okay. Yes, yes, I already have saved data. Now, this is the last part that needs a little bit of work. And that sense over here. Uh, what I did was I changed the name entry screen. Originally there was two screens of kana, there was a bunch of kanji screens, and the English was at the very bottom. Um, I've changed it a little bit, so that I have capital letters, uh, small letters, and some symbols. And the others right now I just blanked it out. I did have kana in there before, but it looked just too out of place to have it. Uh, I have some help, uh, somebody's looking into removing those bottom two options and actually just disabling the player from selecting them at all. On the right side, as you can see, we've got... Uh, these little buttons over here, which um, accent different kind of characters originally, uh, however, they have no effect in the game now. I just need to find a way to get rid of them. Not quite sure where they are. All right. Okay. Now everything's fine as long as I don't over uh, overwrite my last uh, saved game. So I'll just continue as usual here. I'll use the default names. Uh, the only one name I did change right now was, uh, let's see, there was this character Santiago, and because I'm limited to six characters, um, I basically have to uh, reduce it down to Diago, though I heard some other suggestions as well. Um, there are a few other, I think there's two other characters, so I had to shorten them up a little bit, but it doesn't affect anything with the game, and if you've never played a Japanese one, you're not really missing anything anyway, it's just a minor point. So... Yeah, I don't know if you can see that there, but uh, sometimes the text starts scrolling at a constant rate, then all of a sudden it just zooms straight through to the end. Uh, it has to do with the length of the text string itself. I'm not sure if the game was expecting that much text at once, because there are many more characters in English than there are in Japanese when you display these things. Uh, it's a very minor thing. It doesn't quite matter so much, but... Uh, well, there it is anyway. And say so I got this running on my uh, DSi LL. Uh, which I think is the, known as the XL overseas. But uh, it looks very nice. And as I say, I'm just letting this thing run right over through to the uh, first mission so you can see it there. Now I've got an over-leveled character, so this is going to be a very in well, an incredibly fast mission when it finally gets in there. But I'm just letting you take a look at it right now, just to have, see how it looks. Yeah, one complaint the Japanese had with this is there was a playable demo of this before it came out, and all of the dialogue was spoken. However, in the final game, uh, there is no spoken text, so some people noted that. Yeah. yeah, this is a game that, of course, you do need the stylus to play. You can actually control almost all of the actions with the stylus alone, however... In reality, you'll be using the D-pad with your left hand and uh, tapping with your right hand. Unless you're uh, left-handed, then you can use the uh, other keypad over here to dash, and I believe you can configure the controls as well. If not, eh, it's kind of unfortunate, but uh, there are a few ways to do the same type of actions, so it's not uh, such a loss either way. So yeah, it gives you quite a few uh, pages of tutorial text to get you through the beginning. Right, let's see here. All I need to do is destroy the hand, and... Oh, right, I started a new game, so I'm not actually over-leveled. I know the funny thing, I'm right at the beginning of the game. So... It's very reminiscent of Shadow of the Colossus in some ways over here. Yeah, he has a fixed set of a number of moves, and how he acts and responds depends on what you do or where you are partially. So... Ah. That's so much for my screen. Probably need one more round. When he smashes his hand again.
There it goes, okay. That should do it. Yeah. Yeah, the way to get S in this one is uh, basically not get hit and uh, get him the first time he lays his hand down. It is possible to do it. I've done it many times, but not with my thumb. Okay. Okay, it gives you rewards and all the materials that you get from hacking off different parts of the behemoths. And okay, yeah, it's going to play through the story, but I'm not going to sit down here and let do all of that. I'll just uh, back up. I'm not going to oversave that. It's really crazy. Yeah, and you can choose between your six characters like that. Each has their advantages and disadvantages, so to speak. Uh, so that's okay. So anyway. That's mostly it over there. I don't think too much else has changed. Yeah, the sealed slates. Okay. Yeah, these are little puzzles, and Square released uh, codes every once in a while, or if you tap these things in the correct order, you'll unlock different behemoths and different missions. Um, I've included those pictures with the patch, so you'll be able to unlock them anyway. It's not spoiler, it's just extra content. That's it. Got the tutorial here as well. Oh, sorry, yeah. I was going to that, so. I mean, it's all there. Um, let's see. Honors, I won't have much. Party items, everything else like that. That's pretty good. So, anyway, I'll leave it at that for now. Just show you what it was like. I'll get back to you soon.